I'm Yu Zheng, your favorite art therapist, business coach, and mentor. And today I'm going to share the three tips to help you attract clients that actually want art therapy, meaning they want to make art in session. Sometimes art therapists also work as a counselor, social work, or maybe even marriage family therapist, or they have the counselor or family therapist title because there's no separate art therapist title in that state they're in. In those cases, sometimes art therapists attract only clients that want just counseling or just therapy, but not really art therapy per se. So here are the tips that's going to help you uh, to attract the clients that actually want art therapy. So listen carefully. First, you need to promote art therapy and let people know that you are an art therapist, right? If people don't know that you do art therapy, how can they come to you for it, right? <laughs> of course, you have to let people know that you are an art therapist first and foremost, and that you do art therapy. Then people can be more aware. Oh, okay, now she's an art therapist and people will refer you art therapy clients and not just counseling clients, right? So if you seem to other people, like you are just a counselor, then that's the type of clients that you are going to get. However, if you do advertise or promote yourself as an art therapist, and that becomes like your kind of primary identity, you know, then people will be like, okay, she or he does art therapy work. Um, now I can go to her or him for art therapy specifically. Right, uh, because the truth is that most of the time, majority of clients who are seeking counseling or just verbal therapy are just seeking that. They're not looking for art. They're not looking for other uh, modalities per se, because they're just focused on okay, I just need some therapy, right? Uh, I just need to talk with someone, but not I want to make art with someone, because that's a whole different thing right so first of all you need to just promote yourself as an art therapist and put art therapy as your kind of main services uh, if not the, the 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 number one service that you offer to people art therapist that word or that thing concept has to be more of your inner and outer identity you know don't hide the fact that you are an art therapist you know don't hide the fact that you are an art therapist because I feel like art therapists do actually hide themselves, right? do actually hide behind a counselor license. We do actually just put out to the world that, hey, I do counseling or hey, I do therapy, but then that our therapist identity is not really embraced. So you so when we just put a counseling as our kind of main identity, uh, oftentimes what happens is that, that our therapist identity gets, you know, thrown <laughs> to the corner, to the back of our minds and almost forgotten even, right? So I don't, so the tip here is that you don't want to silence that part of yourself. So embrace that identity of being an art therapist, embrace what that means, which means taking um uh, materials with you all everywhere you go talking about art talking about art therapy itself too um sharing about art therapy right uh so just embracing the identity of being an art therapist is a big 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 thing that you can do to um help you attract the the exact clients um that want you right so the art therapist concept has to be more of your inner and outer identity, right? Uh, you got to embrace that art therapist identity inside and outside. Don't hide the fact that you're an art therapist. Don't silence that part of yourself. Be creative. Tap into that art therapist self, right? Posting about art therapy in your social media, all those things. Uh, when you embrace your inner identity as an art therapist, then those outer actions, right, uh, will just naturally follow. So the first tip is really to just embrace the art therapist identity and promote that, right? Promote yourself as an art therapist who does art therapy. 
So the second tip I have for you is actually to identify your ideal client, right? Um, so this is something that I talk about a lot, um, but if you don't specifically know who you want to work with, what actually happens is that we get all kinds of people as clients, right? And oftentimes we get people that are not the greatest fit with us or um, people who are not the greatest fit with the therapy approaches that we use, including our therapy, right? So with anything, you have to first know what you want in order to get what you want, right? You gotta identify what it is that you want in order to get it. <laughs> um, so for even for this situation, it's the same thing. You have to know exactly who you want, the art, art therapy services you provide in order to attract those same people. Right? So you have to think of who are the people who would actually want art therapy from you, you specifically too. Um, you can reflect on the past uh, of the people you've seen. Um, maybe that will help you. Also, you can reflect on who you think just best fits for your art therapy services. And you want to be really specific. Uh, you don't want to be like, oh, anywhere from an adult who's 20 years old to 50 year old. No, that's too much of a big range. You want to be really specific. Uh, for example, like someone who's 25, someone who's just graduated from their master's or whatever, something like that. And of course, be specific with the problem that they're dealing with as well. Um, so be specific in the person that you want to attract. Then when you know that, then it's so much easier uh, and natural to attract the people that you want instead of getting all different kinds of people, including people who do not want art therapy. <laughs> right. So the more specific you are, the more likely that the person who wants your art therapy services will find you and sign up for your session because they are actively searching for someone and they can determine whether you are for them or not. Right. They'll be like, Oh, okay. I see this person who is a art therapist and they serve this person specifically. Then it's so much easier for a potential client to actually be like, okay, I think that person, that art therapist fits me or that art therapist doesn't fit me. So you just want to help the potential client do the fitting process, right? figure out whether you're a good fit or not. And they'll do that on their own time when they're searching for you, right? When they're searching uh, for the art therapist that fit them. So they will determine that. And then on your end, you'll just get the people who have already been filtered. Does that make sense? Uh, so when you once you identify the ideal clients that you specifically want, then your clients will exactly know whether they are the ideal type, ideal client or not, and they will come to you if they are. <laughs> the third uh, tip that I have for you, um, and this is a big one, is actually start doing more art therapy work. Start offering more of it, right? For you to attract art therapy clients, one of the best ways is to actually start doing more art therapy. <laughs> I know it's kind of like, Okay, that's a little obvious. Um, but just start offering art therapy groups, art therapy one-to-one -one sessions, art therapy workshops, whatever it is. Uh, because once you start, things can gain momentum. And you might build a whole community or even an audience of people who love your art therapy offerings. And, you know, word of mouth is a very powerful thing. So, uh once you actually get started, things will happen and people will be like, oh, she's doing this and more and more people will come. So I know that there are people who are being like, oh, I just only have counseling clients. I only have verbal therapy clients, but I don't know how to get more art therapy clients. Then the biggest thing that you can really do is just actually start something, start a session, start a service that is art therapy based, and then go from there. Uh, because I feel like a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't have clients that I want are actually not offering the right services, right? 
Um, if once you start offering it, you can gain momentum, you can gain more awareness from the people around you, from the people in your community, from the people that you want to reach online or offline. So very important step. It might feel scary. You might have some feelings about like, oh, if, what if nobody signs up? Or you might have a belief that even if I do this, people might not sign up, right? But that's just a belief. You want to switch that around. You don't know what will happen <laughs> if you believe differently. <laughs> All right. So those are the three tips that I want to share with you. First of all, really just promote your art therapy identity. Embrace that. Be an art therapist. Let that be known to the world. Number two, uh, identify your ideal clients because that's the way that you attract them. And three, you want to actually start offering the specific art therapy service that you want to offer because then you can gain momentum and awareness from the people around you and you'll attract more of the right people to that specific offering that you have. <laughs> All right, and I want to end this video with three reminders because I think these are, there are stuff that you really need to kind of remind yourself in order to take action with those three tips. Hey, so I am doing a little additional take here uh, just to expand upon these two points I want to um, give you for the reminders, right? Because they're very big, um, big things that influence how we do things, influence how we attract clients. So here is the thing, you know, I think that there is a very common belief amongst our therapists and just in general in this field that people do not want our therapy right not a lot of people want it or that there is not a lot of demand for our therapy so i think that that's just not true and i want to emphasize this point and remind you that it's not true <laughs> Um, you know, if you think about it, there are maybe like almost 8 billion people living on this planet on Earth. <laughs> and, you know, there must be some people, some amount of people, a very fraction and fraction and fraction amount of people who are interested in art therapy. And that is all you need for you to be successful in your own practice or art therapy business. Right? You only need a few of those 8 billion people to be interested in art therapy for you to have a pretty successful and thriving business or, or practice. Right, You just need a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that 8 billion people. So there must be, right? There, there must be um, uh, a, a few people. And that only, and you only need those few people for you to be successful, right? You to have a thriving practice. Yeah. So there is a very huge chance that your practice can be successful because there are enough demand for you, right? Demand for our therapy. So, uh, one of the things that I have learned in my journey as an art therapist personally, uh, who ventured into online services. Uh, from being employed in different settings and actually being able to create my own online business through social media from scratch was that I realized that there are so, so, so many people, especially if you're online, you're connected to, you know, so many thousands of people online in different countries. So you are bound to meet people who are, you know, believing in the same thing or interested in the same subject for example art therapy right and so i realized that there are so many people who are thirsty for art making and thirsty for uh, art therapy <laughs> and uh, it's funny because my business name is based on that idea that people are thirsty for art <laughs> um so yeah i 
I found that in my own personal experience of just talking about art therapy online and talking with people online was that people constantly talk about art therapy. People constantly ask me about it. Um, they ask that they, they inquire uh, about it, and I get that all the time. Um, and my you know art therapy based group programs in the past had to have wait lists, right? Um, so many people email me. Lots of people join my email list uh, for um, art therapy kind of resources. And so it, it's really, if, if you just need one evidence to convince um, your brain that art therapy is in demand, just look at my business. It's definitely, yeah, there's a lot of demand for art therapy and art therapy services. So, and, and not just me, but like I know that other uh, art therapists online that I know are doing so, so well um, in their work and their practices are basically full. They also have wait lists. They also need to um, hire other art therapists for their practice to make it a group practice or hire other contractors and delegate and things like that. So I know that there are totally a lot of demand for art therapy. Um, there's definitely people out there that uh, totally want art therapy services for sure. And it doesn't matter if these people know exactly what art therapy is or is not like, but that they, the f important fact is that they are just interested, you know, they are curious about this and they want to see you and they want to get your services, right? That's the most important part about this. Uh, because most of the time for my own business, you know, most of the people did not have previous experience in art therapy. They were like first time triers. So it doesn't matter that people understand fully what art therapy is, but just that they are curious and they want to try it, right? That's what matters. Um, so at the end of the day, I think that it is just a matter of you knowing that um, there are a lot of demand and that you can take action according to that fact, right? Um, so it's up to you now. It's really because the demand is out there. That's for sure. You just need to take action uh, according to that, right? Because no matter how many fish <laughs> Are in the ocean. If you don't go out and go fishing, that you you are not gonna end up with any fish in your hands, <laughs> right? Um, so that's kind of the metaphor here. <laughs> like, uh, maybe like another one is like, no matter how many apples are on the apple tree, you won't have any of them if you don't go out and pick one out, right? So it requires you to take action and show up as well for you to take advantage of the fact that there are demand uh, for art therapy. So hope you get to see that fact. And um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, this reminder that you are worthy to see people that you want to see, right? And you are worthy to do the work that you want to do. Um, and you don't have to stop yourself from doing what you truly want to do, right? Um, you know, sometimes I think that this trouble that we have or tra challenge that we have about attracting our therapy clients is because of a deeper reason, not just because uh, we're not doing X, Y, and Z, we're not taking action or anything like that, but underneath it, it's it's a, there's such a, a, a deeper kind of reason to us not being able to attract clients. And that's That has been my discovery uh, in my own business journey. Um, like I realized that it's not really the actions that really block me. Like I'm not doing taking those actions, but it's actually my beliefs and my inner 
kind of feelings that I'm I'm experiencing that actually hold me back from taking those actions. So if that makes sense, so the the beliefs and the inner um feelings and thoughts, those are actually the deeper reasons why uh I'm not seeing a particular result with my own business. And I can bet that you are experiencing the same thing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there are usually deeper reasons to why we're not attracting our therapy clients. Um, and that's because we want to, we feel, um, somehow inadequate to help the clients. We feel somehow, um, not worthy enough to do the work that we want to do, like to serve people through our therapy. To help them and one particular way that this feeling of being inadequate or unworthy or not enough as an art therapist um, is actually imposter syndrome <laughs> so even though you might have a master's degree in art therapy or whatever and even though you might have like past training in this kind of area and you're skilled um, you learned a skill, right? Um, you still doubt yourself. You still doubt um, that you are capable and skilled enough to help people with art therapy. Especially when, you know, we've just graduated um, and we haven't done a lot of like art therapy work and we don't have like 10 plus years of work. Uh, under our belt, we tend to have this imposter syndrome, right? We feel like an imposter. We feel like we're trying to pretend to be a professional when we don't actually feel like that inside, right? So we feel like a fraud and um, you don't feel good enough to help someone through our therapy and actually be paid for it and actually earn a living from this um, trade, right? Um, so for those of you who are dealing with this type of kind of fear and doubt inside of you, know that you are totally capable and know that you are good enough to do this work. You are already enough. You don't need to get additional certifications, additional trainings, and tens and thousands of different um trainings and specialties and everything you don't need to do so so much or have like 50 years of experience <laughs> right for you to start doing this work for you to actually help someone through our therapy no you don't need to have all those things you can start now you can do it now um and you can help someone now you're totally adequate and worthy to do this type of work and serve people right um so just don't beat yourself up for it <laughs> don't don't not do the work that you want to do right uh hold yourself back from your passion and your art therapy work just because you don't feel perfectly ready and just because you don't feel perfectly confident and feeling so worthy of this type of work um you don't have to wait for that moment of perfection don't wait for that moment of feeling completely confident 100 percent and ready and feeling like enough because that's likely not going to come that moment of 100 percent perfection and confidence and having everything you need is not going to come most likely um but instead just know that you are already in good enough right now um to do this work and serve people really for myself you know i always think about like um i just need to be one or two steps ahead of my client in order for me to serve them well and i just need to hold the space for them because they are actually doing a lot of the work right me i'm just holding the space i'm just facilitating the process but the process is really up to the clients i think um and so i re just remind myself like i just need to be one two steps ahead that's really good enough um that's what's really required for you to be a helper and 
successfully um, be there for someone, right? And successfully do a session and and facilitate that growth process for a client. I think so. It's not like you have to be perfect. You have to know everything. You have to have everything. You have to not make mistakes. That's not the case at all. You just need to be one or two steps ahead, and you are fine. <laughs> so that's a reminder that I, you know, keep telling myself、um, to feel good about showing up and doing this type of work.、Um, and the other thing is that sometimes we feel inferior. In some way, compared to other mental health clinicians or maybe counselors or other types of helpers,、um, and and it's because somehow doing art therapy、uh, work does not feel good enough,、um, like counseling, like other verbal therapy, like whatever other work there is that's similar. Like it's not it's not evidence based enough. It's not popular enough. It's not recognized enough, right? Sometimes it feels like that with our therapy、um, for a lot of our therapists, and so we internalize this idea that our therapy might not be just worth it for people. People just might not want that because it's not worthy, right?、Um, and not in demand. So, so we might have this kind of little. Weird idea that art therapy is not as good as some other approaches in healing or therapy, and the truth is that of course, art therapy is good. Of course, it's so so worthy. Of course, this service is so valuable and unique. Just because it's so unique, I feel like it has even more value for people, right? It's so so important. This work is this service is. Especially at this day and age, I feel like so many people need it, right? So many people are thirsty for it,、um, and yeah, the the process of like expressing oneself through a nonverbal medium that is so therapeutic, and and so many people need it, and lots of transformations happen because of that.、Um, Because we are able to hold the space for them to experience、um, that kind of creative process, right? So it's amazing.、Uh, it's an amazing service. I know you're an art therapist listening to this, probably. So you know that art therapy is amazing, and you know the inherent value of art therapy. So it's just a matter of telling ourselves that we are. This service is good enough. As any other service out there, is a very unique service and has so much value for people, right? And so many people want it because it has so much value, right? It's so unique.、Um, so know that、uh, definitely it's not inferior in any way, even if that's just only a subconscious belief. Explore that and you know really tell yourself that's not true if that's the case.、Um, so when you have a belief that You know you're not capable or worthy to do this type of work to do art therapy, or maybe the work itself is not worthy. Then, of course, the result is that we internally resu- resist getting clients. We resist doing this work,、um, and that's what result that we will get. Right, that's the result that we will get, which is no clients, <laughs> right? Lack of clients, lack of booking. <laughs>、um, so, just. You know, remind yourself as often as possible that you are worthy to see people.、Um, you want to see and do the art therapy work that you are meant to do. It's an amazing service. Art therapy is an amazing service, and people are dying to sign up for it. So remember that. So the three reminders start with just this: know that so many people want to do art therapy. You really got to know that there's so many people out there. Is amazing.、Uh, so believe that there are many, many people out there who wants your services. And second is that know that you are worthy to see the people that you want to see, and do the work that you want to do. So I don't want you to stop yourself from doing what you want to do just because you feel not worthy of doing your passion or 
you know, executing your dreams and fulfilling your desires and becoming the art therapist and doing the art therapy work that you have always dreamed of because you are always worthy. You are totally worthy. You don't have to do anything else. You're already worthy <laughs> of having the dream business, art, um, dream art therapy job, uh, dream career that you have always wanted. So please, please remember that. All right, that's it for you. Um, I hope that this was really, really helpful. If you loved it, do like it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.